Houston, Texas, White Oak. What's going on? Let's fucking go. You guys are pumped. All right. Without any further ado, let's bring out our guests for this evening, hosts of the number one Texas-based comedy podcast, Pendejo Time. It's our friends Jake and Thomas. Boys, come on out. Yo. How are we doing? All right, well, uh, Houston, Texas, we have, a, we have a little bit of a, sort of like a, a legal business issue we need to uh, wrap up here before we leave the state of Texas. You know, we've been here a week, we've been doing shows, we've been making money in the state of Texas, so there's just something we need to do to make sure we don't get in any trouble with the authorities. So, Felix? Yeah, no, guys, this is just, like, if you'll bear with us, this is just housekeeping. This is, like, it's dirty, but, like, every company has to do it. We have to do this to, like, continue operating in the state and hopefully come back this day. But I will need everyone on stage to join me in reciting the Texas-mandated anti-BDS Pledge of Allegiance to Israel. Let's go. All right, guys. Can you please stand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you have Chris, Chris, can you play the anthem? Yes. All right. Before an app is funded in angel investing rounds. Before an app is funded in angel investing rounds. Before a link is found between regular shorts and pants. Before a link is found before regular shorts and pants. Before Jonathan Pollard's heroic quest. Before Jonathan Pollard's heroic quest. Before a collab with Jonathan Van Ness. <laughs> Jonathan Van Ness. A rose blooms in the desert. I pledge allegiance to the state of Israel. A rose blooms in the desert. I pledge allegiance to the state of Israel. Even if I come down from Mali, even if I, I come, come down, down from, from Mali, Mali, even if my restaurant doesn't combine a custom pizza experience with a hip hop club atmosphere, even if my restaurant doesn't combine a custom pizza experience with a hip hop club atmosphere, even if my skin burns, my cataracts worsen, and my mom has me when she is 40, I will not waver. Let's build that third temple. Let's build that third Let's temple. Let's build that third right. temple. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for your patience. That's, that's all we just needed to do that. We don't want to get in trouble, operating. so yeah, we had no. to cross our I's, dot our T's, and star our bars on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. No, like, we want to come back here, but we, we got to do that. Sorry. Yeah. You have to be very careful, you know. <laughs> you ever know who's watching. Yeah. Well, uh, Thomas and Jake, thanks. thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Thank you, yeah, thank we'll you. Let's give another round of applause for uh, Pendejo time, everybody. Thank you, thank you. I just, uh, I, I wanted to share with you guys uh, a, little, a little Texas uh, anecdote from um, exiting the city of Dallas the other day. I thought you might appreciate it. So on our way, on, on the road to Houston, we stopped at the famous uh, Fuel City gas station in Dallas because we wanted to see their beautiful longhorn steers. Wonderful, wonderful beasts. So we pull up to get gas, and I, I walk to the back where they have the, all, all the steers. And I'm looking at these guys, and they look, they, they're fantastic. So those... those they're, they're not fucking around. Those horns are long as hell. <laughs> it's like you, you hear like, oh, yeah, long horn. Yeah, I get that. And then you see what's like, fuck. Well, I, I it's saw like they're so long, it's like you could tell like halfway through like the horn just doesn't know what to do anymore. It's like, oh, all right, buddy. All right. If you want this to keep going, just good luck because it just turns into a goddamn corkscrew. I, I could tell you all were truly captivated because you all post them on Instagram. <laughs> like, one after the other, I was like, I, mean, I see these, and you're like, oh, look at these fucking things, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I walk back there, and I encounter uh, a, a, a married couple of which the, the wife I would describe as a, like, if Boomhauer were a 60-plus-year-old woman. And I, and I walk up, and I go, like, hey, how's it doing? And she goes, it's going to rain this week. And I go, excuse me? She says, it's going to rain for the rest of the week. And I said, oh, well, uh, thankfully, we're enjoying this nice weather outside. And there's these two huge steers just like at this fence looking at us. And I turn to her and I go, what do you think of these guys? And she goes, no, no cows. They probably want some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, bro. I don't know. <laughs> So that was just a little bit of a, you know, I mean, those cows, like those steers, they did look like they wanted some pussy. I can't. They were well, on a dry they, spell. You, you, you simply exist to captivate guys from New York. So, you know, if you're trying to get some pussy, your most existence is just to be looked at and marveled at behind a gas station. <laughs> it's the worst type of torture, I would imagine. So. But, but you say they were like, 
the, the, the cattle in the state of Texas that are just basically allowed to wander around a pasture behind a gas station. Yeah, no, it's like the, being a cattle who is saved from extinction here is like, it's, they're like Adrian Brody and the pianist. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, the volume that they eat beef here, they're probably wondering like, why me? Why did I survive all this? The, uh, the tradition for a long time at UT was to have Bevo, their like main mascot, he would like come out to all the football games and be like, Woohoo! We got the damn Longhorn out here. And then after I guess he wore out his welcome, they would cook the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, imagine being the best guy at work, and then your boss comes up to you one day after five years, and you're like, we got to shoot you in your fucking head. <laughs> cook your ass up. You're done for. They, they, they do that with that bulldog, the University of Georgia, too. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That was also when Obama came to visit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like uh, Felix's idea of Houston having evil swag, because I do feel like Houston is Gotham, but just with more catfish joints to eat at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, instead of Batman, it's just, like, a 5'8", 380-pound rig welder. Yeah. And it's a Batman who only works out his arms. Right. <laughs> And there's no Riddler or Joker. He just, like, throws his wife down the stairs or whatever. <laughs> like, there, there's no villain to fight except, like, several domestic disputes per month, you know? <laughs> I, uh, I, I grew up about 10, 50, well, I don't want to, 15, 20 minutes in a town called Pasadena, Texas. And uh, every time I come from, I, I grew up there, I moved to Austin. And every time I come back, it's like that part in Wizard of Oz where, this, where the world just gets black and white again. And that's no knock on Pasadena. It's a great town, but there is sort of like a sepia tone, and that's benzene cloud. That's what... It's, it's just sort of fumes. Everybody who cheered, by the way, the 20 or 25 people, plus me were the 26 people who did not die of lymphoma <laughs> from Pasadena, Texas. Yeah, we got some real benzene heads. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, we're talking about Houston, and like, there's a, like, there's a number of like downtown areas, and you said it's very one of the, weird. Yeah, there's like a number of different skylines here in Houston, and one of them you said was like the medical district, where they have all the like the best hospitals in the country. Right, right. And you said it's like the best place in the world to get cancer. So, which is important because this is also the most likely place in the world right. to get cancer. So you're born basically at like a, like you get nerfed from birth. <laughs> You're like, you're going to get some sort of lymphoma or fucked up growth on your head. But as a plus, you sort of well, it's even... Keep, it's keeping the hat sizes too small around well, here. Well, it encourages you to grind and get your hustle on so you can afford fucking health care in the city. <laughs> so if you're like, well, if I do get some sort of terrible blood or brain cancer, I can at least go to the best fucking place on planet Earth to get blood or brain cancer, which is about 30 minutes from where I grew up. I don't want to shill for the healthcare community in Houston, by the way. I do. Thank you, heroes. <laughs> Medical goat. <Yeah. laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. All right, Houston. So uh, one of the things we've been doing on tour is basically treating our audiences like they were several hundred Hollywood producers. Because, you know, we're... we're you know, Chapo and Mark V, we're trying to become Hollywood sickos, okay? Like, I can't, I can't lie. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a Hollywood sicko. So part of that, part of that is ABP, always be pitching. And we're... <laughs> boo. <laughs> you paid for the ticket. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're fucked. I don't, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't care if you grew up in Pasadena or whatever. <laughs> to, to, to me, you're a 70-year-old man named Merv. Who yeah. Can get my movie made. Yeah. So on the first leg of our Southern Tour, we did our justified spec script starring the Trillbillies and Walton Goggins. So and then we did the uh, the, the Andrew Cuomo, the Andrew Cuomo's <laughs> daughter's meatballs. Uh, <laughs> daughter's meatballs film. And we've got a new one for you here tonight. But this one is about like this is a little bit different. This is like a this is a different genre of film. It's one that we're very interested in, but it's one that we have yet to make a foray into. So to that end, I'm turning it over to the script wizard, Felix Biederman. <laughs> I want to, uh, want to thank you for having us. I know your time is valuable. Uh, thank you for circling back. Uh, yeah, what okay. we have today is right. a very exciting project. This is the first media property we have ever produced, that we have ever scripted, 
where deucing, the act of two brothers fucking one woman, is not featured. <laughs> but bear with me, because this is an exciting and new challenge. We are embarking on a type of film we have never made before, a Christian, specifically evangelical film. There is gold in them, our hills. That's right. That's right. Films like The Reliant, Assassin's 32 AD. Films that feature characters such as the Benham Brothers. <laughs> Who are the Benham Brothers, people asked when they saw the hit film The Reliant. Well, it turned out they were minor league baseball players turned HGTV hosts who were fired for homophobia. <laughs> but regardless of how you met these brothers, how they came into your life, how these twins captivated you, whether you already knew them or you knew them through us, you were like, I, I want to see more of them. That's what we all felt. So why not write a movie around them? Why not... Why not take that element that makes them special, their, their twinness, and make it the cornerstone on which we build a media empire, potentially? I bring to you the secret uncles. I just want to, Large Sons Pictures presents the story of a son who must learn to become a nephew. <laughs> I, it's I, the most important journey any son must go through in life. At the Dallas show, I hadn't seen that poster before, and I turned around and read it, and I was like, yeah, yeah. It's the most, yeah. So, Benham twins, they are, I mean, if you had to guess it, uh, you're not a real executive. They're obviously going to be our uncles, right? But they're special uncles. They're uncles that our protagonist, Noah, Noah uh, the Jewish last name, that we're working Weintraub. on. Noah Weintraub. 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 Yeah, Weintraub. He's uh, not actually Jewish. His parents just right, want no, him to yeah. be Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> That's dad, the bit. Yeah, his, his uh, dad, played by Kevin Sorbo, converted to Judaism, took his wife's last name, and got circumcised at age 36. Yeah. Um, but back to Noah. Noah's our, our hero. He's the 17-year-old in the family. The family has tried to stage manage him into being sort of a Greta Thunberg type. Uh, and he wants to, you know, he has his, his own... His parents are sicko lips at the end of it. And, and, and he doesn't want to be a sicko lip. No, he doesn't. He doesn't, but it's, you know, he doesn't want to rebel against his parents, make them sad. He secretly, like, in his heart of hearts, he wants, like, business major, like, major in HVAC. But he's going to Oberlin till he meets his uncles. But who is our hero Noah played by but another hero of conservative media, Firebrand Daily Wire podcast host and actor Michael Knowles. Uh, if we could see some of his uh, acting. It's a beautiful. What the 